this is your favorite topic, um, is morality grounded in God? The reason why I chose this topic to talk to people about is because I, I participate in a lot of debates, Christian atheist debates, and it hasn't happened too much with me, but it, it comes up, I hear frequently that the Christian will say that the atheists borrow from the Christian um, worldview, world which I don't think so at all. I don't think uh, you need God for morality, so I can, I can tell you what my basis is if that's what you well, want to hear let me, that. Let me help you out. Okay. No, you don't need God for morality. Or for a basis. What? Or for a basis in morality. No, you don't need God for a basis in morality. Or for a grounding in morality. Uh, now that now we're now see now you know what you're doing here. I would say that we need God for objective moral standards. Objective morality is different than just morals. You know one I, of the you know what I, I got to tell you one of the confusing things there is that I thought William Lane Craig was saying that morals are objective, but then I. I I actually heard him say, I'm not sure if it was on a YouTube video or, or maybe it was in writing, but it sounded like he was starting to say that morals can be relative or subjective, but it's just that when you subjectively analyze them, there's an objective yeah, I way agree. to analyze them. Sub he says basically there's an objective way to analyze them subjectively. So, I mean, that's really getting confusing. Well, I'll just see what he exactly said. Um, but, see, I have an article on my website, CARM, CARM.org. I have a website. And uh, the article is, can atheists be ethical? Yes, they can. I mean, of course atheists can be ethical. Of course they can have a moral system. Of course they, and they do. They have to. They can't function in society without one. The question isn't that. The question is, do they have any objective moral standards by which they can say something is right or is wrong? Well, I can say I, can say I have a moral standard where I can say things are right or wrong, but I don't need objective morals. No, 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 no. Okay. Let's pick, here's a, do you believe that statements are either true or false? Yeah. Okay, here's a statement. It is always wrong for anyone to torture babies to death merely for their personal pleasure. Is that statement true or is the statement not true? I would say it's true, but can I say something about that? Sure. Um, I think what you're doing when you ask that question is, is you are picking, the, the better word instead of objective is obvious. You're, you're picking like extremes and say, is this extreme example, it's kind of like, it's obvious, not, not so much absolute or objective, it's obvious. Well, what's obvious to you is not obvious to everybody else. But what I meant is you, you purposely pick something that's way out of, on the extreme instead of something that's vague, where ethics really comes into play, trying to figure out the vague things or the, the controversial things. We need absolutes in mm -hmm. order to address the vague things first. You don't start with what's vague, you start with truths. Do you want me to and tell you what my you basis? Do you want me to tell you what all, my basis is for morality? Now we're going to get to that. Okay. You see, the thing is, you well, can say as an atheist, it's always wrong for everyone to do A, B, C, whatever it is. It's always wrong for everyone. As an atheist, you can't ground that in your atheism as being valid. I think you can I can believe. You can believe it is. You can say, I, in my opinion, it's wrong for everybody. But what you're doing is you're saying, I believe there's a moral absolute everyone ought to, to subject themselves to. No, I don't think there's a moral absolute, but I think I can ground it. You said it was a true statement. Yes, I do. It's always wrong for everyone. Then yes. you believe there's a moral obligation to everyone that they should follow, because you believe right. it's wrong for everybody. Right. Based on my principles, right. But you see, you're saying there is a universal truth. A universal truth. Yes, it's always wrong for everyone to do ABC, whatever it is. And you can believe I, that's the case. Can how I tell can you, you justify that in your atheism? Can I tell it, you can I tell you how I how I justify it and and then sure. see how you go with that? So from my studies, I, I have the way I see it is morality is all about behavior. Good and uh, and behavior is the question is what is good and bad behavior? And good behavior leads to flourishing and bad behavior leads to pain for a community or whatever. So then the question is what principles can we do to try to figure out what's good and bad behavior? And I came up with three pillars that I think are good for sorting out ethical problems, and this is my own study. One of them is consequentialism, one is reciprocity, and the other one is individual free rights. And some moral questions play on two or three of those, and that's why they're very tough to figure out. But the example you gave is very obvious. I mean, it's like, um, Consequentialism is an obvious one there because you don't want a society that's going to be doing that kind of behavior. And I don't want my kids subjected to that behavior. 
So, I mean, that's, that's why I'm saying it's an obvious answer on that. I'm not saying my answer is based on some kind of objective reasons. I'm saying it's based on my principles. And I, the reason why I have those principles is because I see how they work to making a good society. And if somebody else gives me different principles, and I think those are good, I'll, I'll adopt those and maybe switch out mine or enhance them. Yeah, you're like uh, a walking example of begging the question. Okay. What's the question? <laughs> what am I begging? <laughs> okay. Um, you say uh, uh, it's based on my principles because I see how they work making a good society. You see how something mm -hmm. works, makes mm -hmm. a good society. You're assuming that the things that work are themselves the goals. You have a standard that is really arbitrary. It's based on your personal opinion. You'll say, this works in society. That's why it's good. Well, why is it good? Because it works in society. Well, what works in society? That which is good. Well, what's good? That which works in society. It's circular. No, I don't, I don't agree with that. Um, you when you say, what's, what's good for society, I said it, it leads to flourishing. But why is flourishing good? Okay, so that's a different question. The reason but why it's is part of your, it's part of it. The why reason it why is because people prefer to live in pleasure and they want to avoid pain. It's that's a, why it's good because of what people want. Sure. Oh, so if I want to rob you, is that good? Well, this is what, then we go to my three principles. Um, what? I, I, it is not good because I would not want a society where people rob each other. So that's just your personal opinion. Everybody, yeah, I think morality, everybody has their own personal opinions on morality. Argumentative and populum again. Logical no, no, fallacy. I'm just saying You're that's what grounding it in logic. You're no, I'm grounding saying it I do that. Preference. I'm saying you do that. Everybody does that. That's what, I mean, that's just by definition. I can justify mine. You can't. I, I did justify mine, though. No, no, no. You don't realize what you're doing. You're saying the goal is the means, or is the, the goal is what's good. Well, why is it good? Because it's the goal. Well, is the goal good? Yes. Well, why is the goal good? Because it's what we, we want. I didn't say the goal is good. I was saying, by definition, morality by definition. is about behavior, just like math is about numbers. No. And Who you said, by definition, morality is about behavior? Who said that? Me. Okay. You know, for uh, example, for example, well, for example, I could say math is all about numbers, and you could say, like, why is that? Why does math have to be about numbers? I think it should be about letters. What about algebra? I think that should be about, I think math should be about letters, not numbers. And it's like, okay. just by definition, math is about numbers. Morality is about behavior. So then, you say morality is about behavior. Is that a universal truth? What else could it be about if it's not about behavior? I'm asking you, is it a universal truth? No, I think it's just by definition. I mean, if you look in a dictionary, I think that's what it's about. So you just say by definition. Yes. It, that's just what it is because you say so. I think that's what everybody agrees to. By definition, just like so, math is about numbers, morality is about behavior. Morality is about behavior. Mm -hmm. Is it about intention? Yes, because intention's tied to behavior. See, if I slap you in the face, we're sitting there, is it good or is it bad that I did that? Morally good or, or morally bad if I slap you? I think it's bad. What if it's to save you from that really venomous bee that was on your cheek? Mm -hmm, that's good. That's good. Maybe. So it's not the behavior, is it? Well, that's the subjective part. I mean, No, it's the motive. It's the non-behavior issue. The exact behavior of slapping you upside the head, which I wouldn't do unless it was a good reason, a morally good reason, okay, isn't the issue. It's, a, it's the motivation, which is not the behavior. I just showed you that your system is wrong. Um, I don't think so. I did. Because, because I mean, it's, a, it's the same old question about stabbing somebody. Should you stab somebody? No. Well, what if I'm doing surgery? Oh, okay, yeah. I mean, it's like... It, it's behavior is an action. Like I said, we're talking about what makes a better society. If people go around stabbing each other, what's the reason? If they're going around stabbing each other because they want to prove how cool they are or how strong they are, that's going to be a bad society. If they're going around stabbing each other to, to do surgery on each other to prolong their lives, that's a good thing. See? You know, as long as everybody. So the motivation is the issue, not the behavior. You well, just refuted yourself. No, I think motivation is part of the analysis, is part of the calculation. You didn't say that. You said behavior is what determines what's good and bad. I showed you that's not true. You even demonstrated it as not being true. What you should do now is say, you know what, I think you got a good point there. Really, it's an issue of behavior. And you ban I mean, <laughs> I just contradicted myself. It's an issue of motivation or motive, not just behavior. Um, I don't know. Let's, let's pick another example and look at it. You want to do that? 
Sure. Or, or we can we can talk about this a little bit more. Um, I, I, I mean, I, let me give me a little, let me give a little bit more uh, input here. Um, a, another way I look at it is, for example, like I said, behavior. Morality is about behavior, and I kind of see it as a map. Like, let's say, for example, in a Google car, you can say, uh, drive me from point A to point B. Is there an absolute best point A to point B map? No. It might depend on the traffic. It might depend on roadblocks. It might depend on all kinds of things. And so it'll say, based on all this, this is the best path at the moment. And that's exactly with morality. You want to get to a good society. Is there an absolute best way to get to that society? No, it depends on the circumstances. Let me ask you a question. And, has, and, and that way it has nothing whatsoever to do with God. God doesn't even come into the play. It's like, yeah. what is good about society? Don't tell me about what you think God said. It, it's totally irrelevant. No, you're begging the question. You're assuming the goal is the right one to begin with. That's all you're doing. You're just assuming a position. But I think even the dictionary agrees. I mean, if you look up in the dictionary, it just defines it. It's just by definition. Okay. Um, you're just assuming that what you're aiming for is the right goal to begin with. That's all you're doing. So let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Is your view of the basis of morality the morally right view? Um, it doesn't seem like morals apply to that question. We're talking about I, what's right and wrong. Yeah, but see, in uh, morals, philosophy, I mean, there's moral philosophy where debater, uh, people debate philosophy. What's the best kind of philosophy to have? It's an intellectual argument. I don't think it's a moral argument. We're I, don't, I don't think it's a moral argument to define which has the best morality or system. I think it's an intellectual argument. We're discussing morality. That's mm -hmm. what we're discussing. Mm -hmm. now you're trying to get away from that. I asked if your view on the basis of morality is the morally right one to have. Is it something that only you have, or is it something everybody else ought to have? Well, ought necessitates morality. Well, I think they ought to have it because I think it's the best that that's out there, but I'm willing to learn if somebody wants oh. to share some other ideas. Well, do you think, and I'm going to be careful how I say this, but I mean this academically, do you think that's arrogant of you to say that, that what your personal view is is what others ought to believe in? No, because I think everybody should do the best, and I, as far as I know, mine's the best, but I'm willing to change if somebody has something better. Well, what's better is the glory of God, but that's another issue. See, you're, what you're saying mm. is that if society does well, which is what you're, you have to define a certain way, then that's what's good. But I keep asking you and other atheists who do the same thing as you, why is that the right standard? Why is it the right standard? Why is reducing harm the right standard? When I asked this of uh, Dan Barker when I debated mm -hmm. him, uh, he doesn't have an answer. It's because what, except to say, it's what people want. Oh, so what people want is what's right? Okay, so let me let me let me um, let me summarize with with this, and then let you summarize your counterpoint. Okay, so sure. I, I said morality is about behavior, and then then the question is what's good and bad behavior, and good behavior leads to flourishing, and bad behavior. Uh, hurts. And so we would try to maximize the good behavior to have a better society and everybody living with love, joy, and peace and all that. So now, how would you summarize your position? What is morality all about? And how do you get there? Well, what I'm saying is that something to be ontologically good or bad has to be rooted in a moral law giver. You can't say something is right or it is wrong from a subjective atheistic perspective because you cannot assert any transcendental value, moral value to an action in an atheistic world. If you're going to say something is morally right or wrong by nature, you're saying it's universally right or wrong by nature. You can only have that if there's a universal transcendent moral lawgiver. Well, but what if the moral lawgiver never said anything about it? For example, in Oregon we have legalized marijuana. Is that immoral to smoke dope? The Bible says in Romans 13 to follow the laws of the land, but it also says to avoid uh, sorcery. The word for sorcery in the Greek is pharmakia. It says to avoid these kind of things. But it also says herbs are given to us for our healing. I have no problem with someone using marijuana for a healing reason if it's a medically applied thing. I have a problem with people want to alter their brain chemistry because they think it feels good. It's the same thing with alcohol. They should not be mastered by a chemical. They should master it. But didn't Jesus turn water into wine at a wedding just so people could feel good? Isn't that why they drank it? 
No, he didn't do it just so they could feel good. I don't know what Bible you've read, well, but he did it partying. because being made under the law, Galatians 4.4, 4, he was obligated to obey his mother and his father, Exodus 20. His mother said, can you do something about this? He said, woman, what have I to do with you? My time has not yet come. But because he was under the law, he then obeyed his mother, and he um, helped out at the party. Uh, yeah, and they said it was the best wine, too. So yeah, he makes good stuff. And Jesus drank alcohol. I think they were, but I think they were having a good party. I mean, yes, no problem. Jesus was accused of being a wine bibber and a drunkard and a glutton because he hung out with those kind of people. Look, Jesus is not the blonde-haired, blue-eyed, Caucasian surfer dude dressed in a woman's nightgown that's often portrayed in Christian churches. Do you think Jesus would uh, drink wine at yes. the party? Yes. Do you think he'd get tipsy and no? No, no, because the Bible says don't get drunk and be mastered by it. However, it does say, if I remember correctly, I hope this is the right verse, uh, uh, Proverbs 30, verse 6, or 30, mm -hmm. verse 7, a give strong drink to the man who is, in, who is perishing. And wine is considered a medicinal use. Well, let me ask you, how about another one? How about uh, birth control? Like the Catholics say that taking the pill is um, abortion, basically. Well, I, I'm not an expert on that, so I can't comment about if it is abortive. It's abortive, you shouldn't do it. But I have no problem with birth control. And here's a real reason why. This is no joke. My wife has a very, very, very rare disease called SMADS-3. This, this is all verified, documented, doctors and everything. And when she was pregnant, our last baby, uh, she had a lot of heart palpitations. We had to go to emergency mm -hmm. complications. So I got fixed after our last child because potentially the next pregnancy could kill her as she was getting older, it was getting worse. No problem there. No problem what, there. what did God say about it, though? He doesn't. Well, I thought you, but he's the one who says what's morally right and wrong. No, he doesn't say that you can't have a vasectomy, for example, or that you can't practice birth control. There are times when birth control is, is appropriate. What if uh, my but wife if and I, you know, comes, we're 25 years old, we're married, we're, but, we're captured by the bad guys, or we're in a concentration camp? Should we go, hey, let's have babies? But if morality not. comes from God... His declaration, how do, you, how do you know what's morally right if, if he never said anything about it? We take what he has revealed, we apply it as best we can to the various mm -hmm. circumstances. Okay, so you try to extrapolate from what he did say. Yes, nothing wrong uh, with that. He doesn't give every single circumstance. So. Do you do this on Tuesday facing west or facing north on mm -hmm. Thursday? Which is it, Matt? You know, come on. Well, Matt, we, we, got, we got through three topics, uh, and we, we're at the end of our time, and uh, we didn't have time for two, so I guess we could do our extended talk on the sure. other two. Sure, let's do it. Let's have fun. Um, so anyway, I'd like to thank you for calling in. This is the, the end of our uh, regular show. Um, okay.